Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I'm your host, Crimson 10. And 15 PCA. Nate 454. Be sure to follow us over on Twitter at C15 Podcast. So, up to episode 5 in she and the Princesses of Power. And this is just an, another awful episode. Just as bad as the last one. Uh, it's it's so funny. There's so many stupid little things. I'm glad they gave Shira like, or when Adora's walking around, she has the sword on her back. Thank you. It didn't just magically reappear like it did in the last episode. But uh, we open up. They're in their uh, war room, or, you know, the general's council where no one talks except for the people who need to. So we have the queen's like, oh, we need plans, and of course, you know, Glimmer always has the plan of, oh, I'm going to rebuild the. With Princess Alliance, and then she come, comes up with the idea that, oh, anyone using the ocean, we have to go get the ocean princess. Okay, she agrees to it. Her, She sends her Adora and Bo because those are the only people they can send anywhere to do anything. They obviously have a captain of the guard, so they do have soldiers, but they never send them anywhere. So they agree to just to send the three, and they go, and they're happier than ever. Then we get to the part where, okay, we get it. You watched Star Wars one time. You know, they have to always show that they watched an anime. They have to show that they watched Star Wars. So just the whole recruiting of Han Solo, that, that's basically this whole entire scene. Then go into a bar. They're kids, mind you, going into a bar. And they're looking for a sea captain, you know, someone that can, can do the Kessel Run. And we get to meet Seahawk, who is ridiculously silly as silly as he can possibly be every stupid cliche you can imagine about a pirate or a sea captain type character he has it all he's always putting his leg up on things like captain morgan it's so like it people think oh that's his character he's supposed to be that way so you purposely made a character to be irritating doesn't make it any less irritating if you make a character purposely stupid doesn't make the idea any less stupid so they're, they're trying to like recruit him and then they do like, it's just weird. Oh, would you like to apply for the job to take us to Sidmeria? Is that what it's called? The, the Sea Kingdom? And that's not how interviews work. You don't walk around asking people for interviews. It's, it's really stupid. But he goes and talks about all the great things he did and all the, you know, just like Han Solo. Even they even do a play on the Kessel Run thing. And he's all over the top and he's, oh, my mustache is real. And of course, Bo's in love with him. So... If him and Bo don't make out by the end of the series, I'm going to be upset. Because he is completely in love with this guy. Then they mention money, which has never been brought up before. And he's like, oh, this is my fee. And they're like, oh, they basically can't afford that. You're the princess of, from a kingdom. So how much could he possibly be asking for? They never mention any numbers. I guess so they can just avoid an economy of any kind. But it's a really stupid point. Like, you, you have a kingdom and you can't afford this guy. And they also alluded to the fact that he likes to arm wrestle. So Adora challenges him to an arm wrestling match. And of course, she beats him. I thought for I thought what was going to happen was she was going to turn to Shira and then just like easily just trounce him. No, she beats him as Adora, a fifteen-year-old girl who doesn't look like she's all that physically strong. It's kind of ridiculous. And Seahawks like a man. I'm assuming he's a man. He looks older than the other characters, but the art's so bad you really can't tell how old he's supposed to be. Is Seahawk 18, 19, or is he like 36? You can't tell. So he loses the arm wrestling match, and that was the bet. Like, oh, if I beat you in arm wrestling, you got to take us for free. And, of course, he, he he agrees to it. We cut back to uh, if the, the day, every episode we have Shadow Weaver and Catra, like, butting heads. So she sends her to go find Adora, and even um, Katra brings up, "Oh, didn't uh, Lord Hordak tell you uh, to let that go?" And she's like, "Oh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna rat out on me?" And of course, Katra agrees to it because she wants to go get it, Adora. So I guess they kind of have the same. They they, they both want to bring her back home, probably for different reasons. And then we get to meet the the lobster lady that was in the uh, opener, who looked just like Jasper, and she's just a silly moron, like. I guess the the idea was to subvert expectations. She looks like a big, strong, could it be like a mean character like Jasper. No, she's like, oh, hi, kitty. And she's silly and has kind of a sweet voice. And it's really dumb because throughout the episode, she like does nothing. They, they fail a lot and she doesn't get mad or anything. And she just takes it as it is. So uh, she sends her with Lobster Lady to go with her. 
and they're on a boat, and of course, cat is a cat. Cats don't like water. <laughs> I hate stupid crap like that. So, Lobster Lady is just like talking about like, oh, isn't it great and wonderful and we're out on the sea and oh, don't stick by me. And she like picks her up all the time and it's ridiculous. I, these silly characters are just, it's enough. I don't, I don't want to deal with these silly ass characters. Then she has her, her crew and of course that little blonde boy. He is the most pathetic character in the history of almost anything. He's like playing the little cup and ball thing. And they're just like joking around and then Catcher's like, oh, go do ship stuff. What the hell? Wouldn't you need like an actual crew of people like underneath the boat, you know, running all the, everything that takes to run a ship? No, it's just these five morons all up on deck. It's beyond stupid. Let me come back to the, the Seahawk. He has a pretty cool, I like the ship design. Kind of reminds me of a really rinky dink version of the Weatherlight from <laughs> Magic the Gathering. But they're on this boat. And they're taking her to, you know, uh, Seahawk is taking him to the Sea Kingdom. And he's just this, this over-the-top silly character. He's always hanging on things and putting his knee up. And, you know, every little pirate cliche. He's, like, singing songs. And this is, like, a recurring theme in this show. That the adults are morons and the kids know what they're doing. Like, Bo, like, you know, ties some special knot to, like, tie down the sail and then, like, Seahawk's like, oh, that's so amazing. And, of course, Bo is so happy that his, you know, his crush likes him. So he has the blushy face and everything. Then he's talking to Glimmer about going up on the lookout or something like that. And, of course, she teleports up there and she knows what she's doing. And then Adora uh, figures something else out, too. And then he's like, well, why did you even bring me along? Apparently, you guys know how to do everything. Which is I'm asking, too, because... They made it a point that they needed a, uh, an experienced sea captain, but they all apparently know how to sail. You know, it's just some ability, something that they all apparently had. It's stupid. Then he sings a song that's as irritating as possible. This might be my 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 uh, my thumbnail <laughs> of Seahawk swinging. And then we got you know it just it basically is a love song between Bo and Seahawk because they're like always all over each other. It's it's so stupid. Then they come upon like a a ship graveyard, like where all the rocks and the ships crash into them. And then Glimmer's like, oh, according to this map, we're way off course. How would she even know that? There's no, how, did she, there's no star tracking. There's no nothing. She just looks at a map in the middle of the ocean and she knows exactly where they're at. It's, it's so dumb. Like, well, how does she have this ability? They never established that she's ever been on a boat or knows anything about sailing. And all all of a sudden, she knows everything. It, it's ridiculous. Maybe cut out the stupid songs and give us some establishing traits of these characters that they may or may not know how to do a certain task. So when it comes up, it can, it's believable. Nope, they just know everything. Everything that comes up, they always figure it out. And of course, Adora is beating uh, Seahawk in more arm wrestling matches because that's what teenage girls can do to full-grown men. And you find out that Seahawk brought them there on purpose, but you never see anyone steering the ship or anything. So how did he bring them there? Um, so there's this big uh, worm creature, and he's like, "Oh, when you go on a, uh, an adventure with me, I, I give you tales to tell your friends. Oh, we fought the giant sea monster. Why, why would he do this? He doesn't look like he has any weapons. The boat doesn't look like it has any type of uh, armaments of any kind. No, no type of defenses. It just looks like a, you know, a pleasure boat. So this big giant worm thing pops out, and I have again. Can someone explain to me how he thought they were gonna fight this thing or have an adventure? And of course, Shira turns in. Uh, Adora turns into Shira off screen because we, you know, save saves money anymore you can, and she jumps onto the worm. I was wrong. I said when I saw this scene in the trailer that she was going to jump into its mouth and like bust out the other side. No, they went completely, they went cheaper. She jumps on it, like breaks its teeth or something with the sword and they go underwater. The whole battle takes place underwater so we don't get to see it. Uh, I, they play it up as like a joke, like a gag, but it's just a cheap way to screw us out of not seeing a cool fight scene that could have been kind of fun. But no, they're just, argu uh, Glimmer and Seahawk are just going to argue about, oh, you brought us here on purpose and... If we fail, my mom's never going to give me a mission. And, you know, she's being all pouty and stupid. And then Adora pops out of the water saying, Oh, I, I took care of it. It's fine now. 
Thank you for not showing us something that could have been a potentially cool fight scene for a silly gag that wasn't funny. We cut back to Catcher and uh, the loser crew. And there's the gates that have like a shield, you know, because somebody watched Lord of the Rings one time. And so Catcher's like, what's with this silly gate? <laughs> uh, they never told us about this. And then, you know, uh, Scissor Punch here. She... Is like, you didn't learn about it in the orientation? There's an orientation? I, the, the Horde, they're, they're the most incompetent army in the world. It's just like, how did they ever beat anybody with these type of captains and children, soldiers? There's just, it is not believable that they could have defeated any army with any type of competence at all. So they get to the gate and they're like, oh, we're going to find a way to break through. Cut back to uh, the bestie squad, and normally the backgrounds look really good, but these the, the this city looks pretty crappy. But it looks like the city's empty, like there's like nobody there. And then we get the one guard who happens to be a guy, and of course he's like, oh halt, who goes there? Oh, and he's like he has to run all the way down there, and he's like a kind of a buffoon idiot. And it's every man in this show is a moron, except for Hordak. He's the only male character who isn't silly. Or weird or dumpy or a loser but everyone else has some type of weird quirk that just makes them pathetic and then this guy this guard is just another pathetic male character and then we get to Mermista is that her name oh lord this character what if I did the rest of the review like this because this show is stupid Okay, we get it. it. It's it's awful. It's not funny. She just has this. Oh, she's the tough, uninterested girl. It, you know when Tara Strong's performance with Raven had that kind of you know long drawled out kind of. You you are not Tara Strong. You can't pull it off. You just sound like a moron. So they get to the Thorn Room, and of course, I guess her uh, her Mista, if I'm saying that right, and Seahawk have like a past. And he's like, oh, here, here I am. And she's like, oh, God, not this guy again. And they kind of allude to the fact that they dated. Because they think, I guess, they. she even mentions, like, oh, you set the boat of fi on fire in the tunnel of love. Is that some type of sexual reference? But she's a teenager, I'm assuming, because she's the same ages of uh, Adora and Glimmer and all them. Seahawk's like a man. I, I'm assuming he's like in his 20s at least in dating a teenager that's just that is so weird unless you went into the tunnel of love with your guy friend that uh, it just it's just a weird relationship that these two have uh, he obviously likes her and he's always like hitting on her and stuff but like in a silly stupid kind of way it's and it just goes on and on and on and then we get uh, them asking, well, you know, join the, the Prince's Alliance. We can we can fight together. And then this these scenes last really long because of the way she talks. Everything is disinterested. And I talk like this. And she's like, oh, like, you know, the Prince's Alliance worked out so well. Oh. Then they, they allude to the fact that, you know, like her dad retired they even said this in the beginning that her father retired so she inherited a kingdom but that apparently only has one one person in the kingdom it's her and her guard slash butler and the, the shield's failing and she's like oh like we've been under we can't survive another attack but does it look like there's there's any attack there's like there's no urgency in anything you're literally gonna just sit in your throne room as your whole kingdom falls apart because you're disinterested in everything it's really 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 stupid and her character design is it's pretty awful she this art here some of these um very just so low quality like look at these screens they're just awful and then you know Siach is being a moron again like hey you know and she's always getting frustrated with him because he's always like hitting on her and you know jumping in her lap and everything it's so it's it, it's a gag that isn't funny the first time. It's not going to be funny the 50th time. It's just going to get more irritating. Then, since Adora can read first one's writing, she sees like a like a tapestry or something on the wall. And then, of course, she's talking about, oh, can you read it? Oh, it says that your wall gets power from some source. 
and I brought this up last time, everything in this show gets its power from like a thing. It's either like a tree or it comes from the land. It's always like some type of connection and all the time. So she's like, oh, if I can heal your your wall, will you, would you consider joining the Princess Alliance? And then she's like, you know, she doesn't necessarily agree or disagree, but they go and go do it. Then they're up on the where these rocks are conveniently placed in front of the, the wall so they can, like, be up towards it. Like, it's, those are just there. She turns into she and they skip the, the animation. She just, in the blink of an eye, and now she's she which I guess, you know, they're going to just skip that. And she pulls out her sword and starts shooting a magic beam at it. They don't explain what she's doing, how this is fixing it. It just, you just, it, it's working. And then Bo, like, interrupts her and it kind of breaks in. She's like, you know, you got to leave me alone. I, I got to concentrate. And apparently it's going to take a while to shoot an energy beam at a wall. Then they're standing up there and watching this happen. And then freaking Seahawk is going to just take off without him. And Glimmer teleports down there. And he's like, well, I'm just ruining things and look at me. And this is this is from uh, one of the people in the comments is like, Bo had Crash Bandicoot's body frame. And so does Seahawk. Look how terrible this is. Some of this art is so laughably bad. Oh my goodness, this looks awful. But then he's like, I'm just ruining things and no one takes me seriously. Well, maybe because you act like a freaking buffoon all the damn time. That's why no one takes you seriously, you idiot. And he's like, you know, lamenting about, oh, I used to go on adventures and I had a crew and we do all these fun things and people liked it when I lit my boat on fire. It's like, wh- why would they like that? That's ridiculous. Then, you know, Glimmer's like, oh, you know, try being the princess of uh, the queen and no one trusts you. And then every episode, someone has to talk somebody up. And then Seahawks like, Glimmer, anyone who would defy you would be sorely mistaken. It's every episode... So when it has to, they have to uh, validate you. This is like you gotta have validation all the time. So they both talk each other up, and then now now they're they're, they're bestie good friends. Here comes Catra and her her loser crew with their um, boat tank, and they have a what it looks like a cranked powered laser cannon. Like they have to crank it up before they shoot it. I don't know how this thing works, but it's uh it's pretty silly. So they they're they're, they uh, shoot at the gate, and it's uh, screwing up, you know, uh, the healing process. And Catra has to use a spyglass to, to see up there. But they couldn't see the giant blonde woman shooting a laser beam into the thing. They couldn't see that from distance. It's so stupid. So Catra's like, oh, you know, I'm going to go up there and get her. And uh, then it's like, oh, keep attacking the, the wall. Uh, then... Uh, she was like, oh, just give me some more time. I, I can get this fixed. So Bo and <sighs> Mermista? I- I'm bad with names. It's going to take me a while before I learn all their names. But I think that's her name. She turns into her little mermaid form and jumps in the water. And then Bo apparently has a uh, grappling hook uh, with a reel and everything on his uh, bow. Would it have been really funny if they would have made a... Um, a Goonies reference where when he gets on the sail, he should have said, hey, you guys, as he went down the thing. That would have been funny. But he, he goes down the sail, oh, you know, like every classic pirate film. And he shoots an arrow at, of course, the dorky guy who just still has his cup and ball, his toy. He doesn't have a weapon. This thing's a freaking toy. Gets pinned to the wall because he's a complete loser. He doesn't even try to struggle or get out of it. He just says, oh, I'm stuck to the wall. Here I am. And then Bo starts having a fight with the girl with the dreadlocks. And this is like a pathetic fight. It's beyond stupid. Then they do this weird effect. And here's a screenshot. That I didn't purposely try to get a in-between. This is the effect they used when she did her kick. Where it just showed like a bunch of like shadow ver- Like It's really weird. Because they don't do this any other time. Just in this one scene. It's really bad. Don't do that. It looks awful. And uh, Scissor Punch here is... Still working the crank on the uh, the cannon instead of helping, you know, her teammate fight Bo. And it gets, like, goop, gets gooped arrowed. So I guess I don't know if that stops it or not. And Mermista's, like, shooting waterways from, like, the ocean onto the boat. So it's not really doing much of anything. Then we get loser blonde guy. He starts running towards her, screaming with his eyes closed. Like, is this the show's goal to show every male character to be just pathetic? He is, what was he going to do? Run at him with his... His eyes are closed. It's so stupid. 
So he gets just shoved aside easily, and then um, again, I, I don't remember her name. I'm going to keep referring to her as Scissor Punch because that's funnier. She just grabs Bo and just chucks her, chucks him off the into the uh, looks like a fan induct. It was going to like chop him up. <laughs> that would have been that would have been funny. And Bo has little hearts in the bottom of his boots. Uh, that's a nice uh, detail there. But uh, he's about to fall into this thing and get horribly mangled. That would, that would have been just the best. But uh, Seahawk comes swinging in. And saves them, and there you go. They're, they're lovers. They just he just absolutely loves Seahawk. And where where was this thing hooked up to? You no, know, like when Spider Man would swing in, and it wouldn't make sense where his web would connect. But like in a big city, there's always buildings around. This is like kind of a pier. It doesn't really make sense where he could hook this thing, get enough momentum, swing, catch boat. It's it's Looney Tunes logic. It's whatever. He gets saved by his lover, and he he's got the big sparkly eyes and everything. It's ridiculous. Then they come up with the plan of lighting their boat on fire and smashing it into the enemy's boat. Yeah, it's, their boat's made of metal, and it looks really strong. I don't think that would have done anything unless there was like an explosive on board. It, it's a terrible plan. Shira's still uh, trying to heal the, the shield and everything, and then Katra like jumps on her sword and like is talking crap to her and just like kind of being really weird and touching her face and everything. It's kind of molestery. Like I think a kid could bad touch, bad touch, Catra. Weird. And again, we get scenes where it looks like she was really tall. And then we get scenes where she doesn't look as tall at all. Like the 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 consistency of animation just isn't there. And Catra's like cutting her up with her claws but you never see it it's all done like off screen and her back is turned is that just like a cheap way not to have the you know for the animation we did get like a gut punch which was kind of cool but like the actual slicing because you see that she gets cuts on her face we don't actually see it happen i don't know is there some kind of so i remember back in the day like in the 90s you couldn't show a female character getting physically hurt it always had to be happening off screen or you would see like a flash you would never see the impact is that what they're doing here but we get uh catcher just being a weirdo she's all whispering in her ear and everything it's just it's a very bad touch catcher it's don't do this if this was a male character doing all this there there would have been a freaking complete s storm that you wouldn't believe but since it's two girls i guess apparently that makes it okay then uh Mermista shoots like a water thing and knocks Catra off of uh Shira and then you have Bo riding on her like she's some type of you know sea vehicle <laughs> they jump up there and they uh they're like oh yeah we, we we finished fixing the shield and then of course the two losers on the boat are still cranking the the cranked powered cannon and they're going to take another shot at Shira but then, of course, they lit their boat on fire and they're going to smash it into their boat. They see it coming. Their boat is, what, ten, uh, three quarters the size? It's it's a small boat. It, they crash it into their boat. They abandon ship, the bad guys. The two boats hit and they sink in a, like in a second. And I don't think that would happen. The boat's just on fire. It's not an explosive boat. Was there, was there like, uh, easily to solve this? Oh, get all the gunpowder or blasting jelly or whatever kind of thing they use for armaments. Load up everything in the front side of the boat and then we hit or we'll, we'll ignite it. No, they just touch and they, they fall apart. The boat made of paper mache. It's ridiculous. Then they're like everyone's like super yay. And uh, Mermista looks standing there looking cool. And then Bo and Seahawk look like absolute freaking fools. She uh, she heals the, the boat. Uh, not the boat. She heals the, the the wall, so everything's happy now. And and a silly and again a, a silly scene. Uh, Catcher's like floating in the water after defeat, and uh, Scissor Punch comes by in a plank of wood, picks her up, and just swims away. Like what are they gonna do? They have no boat. They're gonna swim all the way back to the fright zone. This is so stupid. <laughs> they don't show how they get back home. It just we just assume they found a way. Then everything everything's happy now, and. We got, uh, Mermista's like, oh, I guess you'll need another boat or something. Gives, gives Seahawk another boat because, you know, he sacrificed his. And then this is actually the one time Seahawk didn't sound like a complete freaking idiot. 
he's like, oh, you can do me one favor. And of course, she's thinking, oh, you're going to ask me out again. He's like, no, can you please join the Princess Alliance, you know, with Glimmer because you guys will be stronger together than apart. Oh, okay, he actually said something smart. Then she agrees to it and then everyone's happy and we get the big time hug at the end. A- another horrible episode, just just bad all around, bad writing, bad art. And man, that every, the, they introduced three ridiculously irritating characters. Mermista and her her I don't give a crap voice. We get it. You're you're the angsty teen, you know, so insulting Titans and thought, "Well, that Raven attitude, it's going to work here, but they can't they don't pull it off." Seahawk, just the worst version of Han Solo you could possibly ever imagine. And then uh, Scissor Girl, Scissor Punch, she, I I know the, like, oh, let's make her kind of like a happy character, even though she looks like a big, burly, mean character. But she doesn't do anything. She doesn't, she doesn't get angry that they lost their ship or catch her being a moron or the, her other crew members being completely, pathetically losers. I'm hoping there was other people down at the bottom of that ship and they killed them. So they, they murdered those other people down there. And it's just all just another horrible episode. Is it worse than the last one? Maybe. They're, they're equally as bad. But um, here's to episode six tomorrow. Crimson Sin here. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, sub, and share. Also, for the most up-to-date information about the podcast, follow us on Twitter at C15Podcast. Oh, my God.